And welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about radical and rational notation, nth roots, and rational expressions. Okay, just some terms and definitions that you need to think about while we go through the lesson. If I say uh, b to the n, so b to the n is equal to a, then b is the nth root of a. Well, what does that mean? All right, so if I say, I'm going to give you an example here, 3 squared is equal to 9, and I'm saying if b or 3 squared is equal to a or 9, then b or 3 is the nth or the square root of 9. I could also say uh, 2 cubed is equal to 8. So I would say b, which is 2, is the cubed root of 8. So that's all this is saying. We're saying that we can go from a rational notation form, b to the n is equal to a, to a form in which we have radical notation. And I would write, uh, in this case, 2 to the third is equal to 8. I would write that as the cubed root of 8 is equal to 2. Okay, so radical notation can be written as some value with an exponent to it. So we call this radical notation and this value we call rational notation. In this case, n is going to be the index. So n is called the index. And then sometimes I have a power here in this area. If there's no power here, I just assume that it's 1. So I can rewrite this in rational exponent form as a to the 1 over n. So n is the index. n is the denominator portion of the exponent. And then the power is going to be, in this case, 1. And that is uh, the numerator portion of the exponent. So if I wrote uh, something like this, the square root of 3 to the third power, then in rational notation, it would look something like 3 to the 3 over 2, where the power goes to the numerator, and then the index goes to the denominator. Right, this value a underneath the radical we call the radicand. So I have the index, I have the power that I'm taking the entire radical to, and then I have the radicand. So index, radical signed, radical, uh, I'm sorry, radicand, the entire operation or expression is called the radical. And then the power here is this value in the upper right hand corner, which if not stated is equal to 1. All right, so let's talk about uh, what you're going to see, and this is kind of, again, for your information, uh, with different values and different uh, types of roots. So when we say we have an even integer as a root, then it might be something like the square root of 9, or the fourth root of 9, or the sixth root of 9. So we're talking about the index being an even root. All right. So let's go through the three possibilities. I have uh, the possibilities are when a or the radicand is less than zero, when a or the radicand is equal to zero, and when the radicand is going to be greater than zero. All right. So in this case, <clears throat> uh, the first case I have a is less than zero, the radicand is less than zero. If I say what's the square root of negative 27, I know that I'm going to end up with some imaginary number. Right? There's no real root, square root of negative 27. It's going to be imaginary. In my second case, when a is equal to 0, I say, what's the square root or the fourth root or the sixth root of 0? And that's going to end up being 0. The 0 times itself as many times as I want is always going to be 0. So I have one real root or one real square root or one real fourth root or one real sixth root of 0. It's always going to be just 0. Now, if I have a positive value when the radicand is going to be greater than 0, and I take the square root of 4, I'm going to end up with just one positive root. Uh, result. Okay, now when we talk about uh, how many nth roots we have, we're going to say that we have two. Even though in this particular expression, the square root of 4 is equal to 2, I know that negative 2 squared is equal to 4, and I know that 2 squared is equal to 4. So when I go back to the original definition, um, if b to the n is equal to a, then b is the nth root of a, I know that negative 2 is going to be one of the roots of 4, okay? So I've got two real nth roots when this value is positive, when the radicand is positive. Uh, but this 
expression the square root of 4 is going to be equal to 2. Now we call the principal square root the positive square root of any particular positive value. Okay, so uh, one of the things that I want to talk about is that when I write a radical without any index, then this index value is assumed to be 2. Okay, so if I say what's this value, it's equal to 2. But the square root of 4 is different than the cubed root of 4. Okay, so this index has the cubed root of 4. This index, unstated, it's 2, which is the square root of 4. Okay, moving on. Now let's talk about what happens when we have uh, odd integers as the index. So in this case, uh, I'm sorry, odd integers as the index. When I have a value of a of the radicand that's less than 0, so I'm going to say negative 27, and I'm going to say my uh, odd index integer is going to be 3. Then I'm going to have one result. This result is negative 3. Okay, because negative 3 times itself 3 times is equal to negative 27. That's the value that I'm looking for. I have one real nth root. So this could be uh, the cubed root, uh, the fifth root of negative 27. Won't be negative 3, but it'll be some singular number. It'll be just one root. If I have the third or the fifth root of 0, I still end up with 0. That's my result. And then finally, if I have a positive value, let's just say it's 27, and I take the cubed root of that value, then I'm going to end up with still just one result. Okay, so regardless of uh, what uh, value I have as the radicand, my, if my index is going to be an odd integer, then I'm going to end up with one real root for all of these. Okay, moving on. Now we're going to talk about properties of rational exponents. Um, and I'm just going to leave this here for your edification. We've already reviewed this information, but you're going to have to come back and uh, take a look at this as we go through the process of handling exponents um, as part of expressions or equations and operations. So please review this uh, material. Keep it handy while you go through the subsequent chapters. All right, that's it for chapter 6.1. Come back and join us for chapter 6.2. Uh, just to give you a heads up, we're going to talk about uh, rational uh, exponent form, radical exponent form, and then we'll talk about specific operations with rational and radical uh, uh, expressions and how you can add and subtract rational and radical uh, values and also how you can multiply and divide rational and radical uh, values. All right, see you next time on Otten Math.